What's up guys, welcome back to Iron Mustang. On today's video, we're gonna talk about port matching and air intake manifolds. Now, I'm running a Edelbrock RPM air gap. I'll show you guys in a second. There's a lot of great videos out there on how to port match. I don't really want to go over the grinding and surface finish and all that. I wanna talk about how I strategically decided where to put my layout marks to start grinding because on this dual plane intake manifold, you can't see down the runners. And I haven't seen a good video on how to determine what the alignment actually is. So, so um, this one's gonna be kind of short. I'm probably just gonna get the templates made. I got a buddy coming over here that has some experience to help me do the, the grinding and cutting. But I wanna get these templates made, lined up, and kind of figure out where I'm at, and I'll show you guys how it worked out and uh, hopefully at least this part will be helpful to somebody if you want to use this method. So on this RPM air gap, you stick your finger in there. You can't see where it comes out on the other side, but you can't see through it when you stick it down on your heads. So I just got some cheap poster board stock from Walmart and that's what I'm gonna use to make my templates. So my first set of templates here, I tried to do it with a plastic mallet to try to avoid maybe causing any damage to the heads. Uh, that ended up not really giving me a crisp line like I wanted. I did a lot of trimming with a razor blade and a big giant vein in the butt. Um, I slapped down another set of templates, used the ball ping, just did it real light, and knocked out a complete set of templates in probably like two minutes. So don't do what I'm doing here. Use the ball ping, you're gonna get a lot better result. All right, so super quick here. We're just gonna kinda check out our template and I'm gonna do my best to describe to you guys how I, how I got it, how, where I wanted it. So here's my template here. Basically, I trimmed the template to match the cylinder head, okay? So all this cut around here matches the cylinder head. So when I put it back on the cylinder head, every time it was in the exact same spot. Um, unlike the first little video clip I showed you guys, I ended up using the ball ping. You see the ball ping hammer, just did it real lightly. I mean, this produced such a crisp cut line. Um, and it's just super fast. I mean, I really think I spent only probably like a minute, minute and a half on each one of these and was able just to get the pieces out and I had a perfect template of the head. Okay, so once I had it on, on the head, I put tape behind where you can see I had it on um, behind and then I put the air intake manifold down on top of it and then just as a reference point once I put my, my bolt in to kind of hold it down I did draw that little line across the top just to kind of reference the, the location to make sure it didn't shift on me when I picked it up and then I, I rolled the tape back on to my intake manifold and that's what I used to do my scribe lines. And then I went ahead and used some of this uh, spray loud ink from uh, Seymour. This stuff worked really well. And I used a, I think it's a glass cutter that I got off Amazon. Um, this one's loose here, I gotta tighten it back in. But uh, I just used that to scribe around the line. And it just, it created a real nice line for me as you can see in the pictures. So. Again, like I said, I'm not trying to make a video on exactly how to port. Just, I don't really see a lot of videos out there on doing a dual plane that you can't see down the runners. So that's a technique that I use to get my layout lines. And as you can see, I got the engine installed right before I put the uh, intake manifold down. I did use the bore scope to make sure everything was lined up real well. And I'm overall pretty happy with the results. So here's a quick little overview of what it looked like after I had finished porting from the bottom. Then I'll uh, show you guys what I did from the top. That was kind of just my own interpretation of what I've caught of watching a bunch of different porting videos. Again, not a lot of information out there on what really works on porting a, a dual plane manifold, but I have seen that most people say completely removing the center divider is a bad idea and that it lowers power. So 
I just went ahead and kind of, as you'll see here in this next frame, went ahead and kind of tapered everything in so the air would have a nice transition to get into the vehicle. All right, so what we're looking at right here is probably maybe if there's anything you take away from this video, the most helpful tip I can give. Uh, that's my brand new intake manifold and quite frankly after I washed it, it looked like crap. Um, looked like I added about 15 years of service to it. Um, so I cleaned it with Purple Power. I love that stuff. It is an amazing cleaner. It is not meant for porous aluminum. They make a, another product that is specifically for aluminum that I have not tried, and I'd be more than happy to try it, like I said. Not a slam on Purple Power. Uh, different products have different applications. Uh, be careful what you clean these intake manifolds with when you're trying to clean up any of your uh, WD-40 or whatever you use to lube up your burr bits and all that, because, uh, yeah. So the way I was able to take care of this thing and get it back to its uh, former glory was I had to take it down in the machine shop and had it uh, media blasted for about 40 bucks, and then we were uh, back in good shape. Anyway, hope you guys picked something up out of this video. Like I said, it's not a full how-to. Try to keep it as short as I could. Um, didn't want anybody really uh, to miss this part of the process because it is an important part, but again, with dual planes, there's not a whole bunch of information on porting them and exactly what you should or shouldn't do. So, thanks for watching. Thank you.